For years, Megadeth fans have been begging the band to play more of their deep cuts live. And although in all fairness, lately the boys have diversified their setlist, with 16 studio albums in the Megadeth catalog, there are still quite a bunch of songs this band has never played live. And if in case of some of them it's pretty understandable, <laughs> the others remain a hidden gem of the Megadeth catalog. So let's take a look at all of them. Every song from the first five albums has been performed by Megadeth at least at some point in their career. Although some of them of course got played way more often than the others, which I actually don't think is always fair. And so talking about the band's debut album, Killing Is My Business and Business Is Good, while every track has been performed live by Megadeth, most of the band's attention has been given to the song Mechanics, which Dave Mustaine wrote during his time with another band. <laughs> In fact, Mechanics is the only song from Killing Is My Business that has retained a more or less secure spot in the band's setlist since then and has been performed live a little under 400 times so far. And by the way, since so many people love comparing Megadeth to Metallica, its twin sister, The Four Horsemen, has been played by Metallica just a little under 600 times. And it's actually by far not the most performed track from Kill Em All. And no, it doesn't tell us absolutely anything about those two bands. But anyways, all of the tracks from Killing Is My Business and Business Is Good, with the exception of Rattlehead, have only been performed back at the start of the band's career, with such songs as Lost Rights, Love to Death, Chosen Ones, or Looking Down the Cross have not been heard live by Megadeth fans for over 36 years. Talking about the band's sophomore album, Peace Sells, but who's buying? The situation here becomes even more interesting. In addition to all of the songs from this record having been performed in front of the fans, its title track, or I guess its almost title track, is in fact the most played song in the entire Megadeth catalog, with Peace Sells appearing at a Megadeth setlist over 1800 times in the past 38 years. In fact, thanks to this track and Wake Up Dead, the band's second studio output became the most played 1980s Megadeth record, ironically still featuring the least performed song of the decade. <laughs> Even more, this status could have actually been even higher, if not for The Conjuring, which has been a Megadeth setlist stable since it was released, yet has not been performed even once in 17 years from 2001 to 2018, which was of course due to Dave Mustaine's Christian beliefs being at odds with its subject matter. As a teenager, Dave Mustaine used to practice black magic, and it is the dark experience of those days that has influenced the lyrics of this 1986 track, and according to Dave himself, affected his life for years after. And so naturally, when turning to Christianity, Dave vouched to never play the song again, the decision which he actually reconsidered several years ago. In 2016, the drummer Chris Adler suggested the band should re-record this track with different lyrics, yet Dave, whose personal spiritual journey was already at a different level, realized that he doesn't actually mind performing The Conjuring again and said something like this. As I grow, I evolve in my outlook and my personal journey here, being a positive person and being a positive influence on other people's lives. So as long as it doesn't hurt anybody, I wouldn't mind doing this song again. Because it is a good song. And here I just have to say, yes Dave, we all agree, it is a good song. And we're actually very happy that you feel comfortable playing it live again. Oh, so far so good, so what Megadeth released the track In My Darkest Hour, which many believe to be one of the greatest songs Dave Mustaine has ever written. And in all honesty, 
rightfully so. And thus I guess it is no surprise that since it's released, In My Darkest Hour has never been skipped at any of the band's live tours up until today. Not even once, even if the band only got to play it several times that same year. <laughs> But in my opinion, in addition to this, of course, great track, so far so good, so what, also features some amazing and unfortunately forgotten songs. Like for example, Mary Jane, which sadly hasn't been heard live by the band since the tour in support of the album back in 1988. Or 502, which unfortunately has only been played a handful of times. No, literally, it has only been performed five times in almost 40 years. Shame. Shame, shame, shame! In addition to all that, we also have the opening instrumental piece Into the Lungs of Hell, which many fans believe the band has never played live. And that would almost be true. Since the early versions performed by Dave Mustaine in 1984 and 1985, so three years before this song was officially released and back when it was still called Quicksand, were rather different from the track we all know today. Yet according to some sources, on their So Far So Good So What tour in 1988, the band played two shows in Cleveland, Ohio, and there, and there only, this intro has been performed by the full band as a concert opener. <laughs> And by the way, and I know it may sound strange, but for some weird reason, Into the Lungs of Hell is actually one of my favorite Megadeth songs, at least from the 1980s. And I would absolutely love to see the band open in a show with it once again, especially since a Sex Pistols cover from that same record has been given way more attention than around 90% of the songs which were actually written by Megadeth. By the way guys, real quick, only around 30% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the Metal Pilgrim channel. So if you still haven't done so, and if you don't absolutely hate me for the fact that I love Into the Lungs of Hell, I would really appreciate it if you would consider doing it right now. Let's continue building this amazing heavy metal community together. <laughs> Both Rust in Peace and Countdown to Extinction, of course, have gotten plenty of attention at live shows throughout the years. Yet, interestingly enough, the fans actually had to wait for 20 years to hear the title track from Megadeth's 1990s masterpiece live. And not even on the tour, which was literally titled Rust in Peace, Megadeth performed that song. Until in 2010, Megadeth decided to honor their most well-known studio album. And I actually believe that if it was not for Rust in Peace 20th anniversary tour, we most likely would never have heard many of the amazing songs from that album live. <laughs> The same goes for Countdown to Extinction. Although the songs Skin on My Teeth, Symphony of Destruction and Sweat and Bullets became regulars on Megadeth's setlist, and especially the last two. Most of the tracks of this album were performed more during the 20th anniversary tour than during the original run. And for majority of those, this was actually sadly the last time the Megadeth fans could have heard it live. These two albums changed everything for Megadeth, and after them, the live performance situation will never be the same for the band. And thus, here I guess would be a good time for us to make some conclusions. So let's do it. At the beginning of their career, Megadeth tried to dedicate a more or less the same amount of attention to all of their early songs. And this, of course, is very understandable given the band simply did not have that many tracks to choose from and they had to play something live. But with the appearance of the first hits, the band's set list became more and more like a best-of compilation, with many of the amazing tracks being unrightfully forgotten. And not really as much by the fans, but rather by the band themselves. <laughs> And the truth is that both Rust in Peace and Countdown to Extinction are simply incredible albums. And here's the thing, at least to me, they are incredible as a whole. 
and not really only because of their most popular tunes. And while I of course love Hangar 18 or Tornado of Souls, I think most of the Megadeth fans would absolutely love it if the band would dedicate more time to playing at least some of the tracks which sadly were only performed back in 2010 and 2012. Because let's be honest here, if not for those tracks, this band would never most likely have gotten to where they are at today. <laughs> On November 1st, 1994, Megadeth released Euthanasia, which became the first Megadeth record which has not been performed live in its entirety. And so to this very day, 5 of the 12 songs of this album, namely Addicted to Chaos, Elysian Fields, Blood of Heroes, I Thought I Knew It All and Black Curtains have never been played live. Even more, despite its pretty good chart positions all across the world, most of the other tracks from it have only been played during the Euthanasia and Youth in Europe tours. And not even on all the concerts, with the only songs from that record that were not totally forgotten by the band being Reckoning Day and of course A Tu Le Monde, which has become one of the biggest international hits by the band. A tu le monde, a tu mes amis. And since then, such situation became a norm for Megadeth, with neither of the 10 albums released post-1994 having all songs being performed live by the band. Mastermind, Have Cool Will Travel and Vortex became the three songs from Cryptic Ridens that never got heard by the Megadeth fans at a band's show, which in all honesty is pretty understandable, given that by then the band had to start choosing the songs pretty carefully, although I actually would absolutely not mind Mastermind replacing some of the other tracks from Cryptic Ridens in the set list. You know, possibly even this one. On the 1999 album Risk, Megadeth decided to crank the mainstream elements they've used in their previous works to 11. These go to 11. Yet with all due respect to their 8th studio album, these risky experiments, you see what I did there? We're not exactly met with much enthusiasm by the fans. And maybe that's why the staggering amount of 7 out of 12 tracks from the record have never been played by the band, those being Insomnia, Enter the Arena, which, okay, doesn't really count. The Doctor is Calling, Wanderlust, Ecstasy, Seven, and Time. And only the lead single Crush'em, which has gotten some radio play due to its rather clever ties to professional wrestling, did not go completely unnoticed by Megadeth. If I win, Anyway, guys, what do you personally think about Risk and would you like Megadeth to play any of the songs from this record live more often? Please let us know in the comments. And overall, as always, please do not hesitate to comment on anything you hear or see in this video, and especially if you disagree with me, because the whole point of our Metal Pilgrim channel is, of course, to start a conversation. But alright, the break is over. Let's continue. Ah! The world needs a hero, Megadeth opened a new chapter of their career. A spree of five studio albums, which unlike the first five records, did not only feature some of the least performed tracks in the band's discography, but also featured the title tracks, which have never been played live up until today. Even on the tours in support of those albums, which were literally named after those songs. And so, from the aforementioned 2001 record, half of the songs to this very day remain unplayed by Megadeth. Those in addition to the title track, The World Needs a Hero, being Disconnect, Recipe for Hate, Losing My Senses, Silent Scorn, and When. Yet, weirdly enough, the bonus track from that same album was actually presented to the crowd twice. Once on July 26, 2001 in Shizuoka, Japan, and second time four years later at Pepsi Music 2005 in Buenos Aires, Argentina. But I know, I know you know, I'm coming home to Argentina. 
The material of the follow-up album, The System Has Failed, was actually written by Dave with an intention to release a solo record. Yet, due to contractual commitment to the record company, he was forced to publish it as a part of the Magnet discography. And so, I guess, technically, neither of these songs were actually supposed to be performed live by Magadeth. I mean, technically there was supposed to be no Magadeth by then, since it was disbanded by Dave two years prior to the release of this record. It's gotta be a joke. And therefore, in our goodwill, let's say that it is a miracle that 7 of 12 tracks were actually heard by the fans at a live show, and only Tears in a Vial, I Know Jack, Truth Be Told, Shadow of Death and My Kingdom still remain to be performed by the band. Which in all honesty and with all due respect to the Megadeth Resurrection record, I don't think will ever happen. Although actually this album will be celebrating its 20th anniversary this year and we all know that this is a magic number for some of the Megadeth records, so I guess we'll just have to wait and find out very, very soon. On United Abominations, Endgame and 13, the band continued the tradition started two albums before that, with all three of the title tracks being completely ignored by Megadeth, not counting the use of the name in the respective tour promos. And in addition to those, Blessed Are the Dead, Play for Blood, America Stun, and Your Dead from United Abominations have never been heard live by Megadeth fans. Something I can actually absolutely understand. But what I can't understand is why the band has never used the chance to perform Never Walk Alone and Call to Arms while playing in Liverpool. Can you imagine the sing alone in that town? And when it comes to Endgame, all in all 4 of the 11 songs, while for 13 an incredible amount of 9 out of, well, obviously 13 songs, to this very day remain absolutely ignored by the Megadeth camp, placing those two albums among the least played Megadeth records overall, with not that many more performances than The Sick, The Dying and The Dead. And that album has just come out. Super Collider is possibly one of the most divisive Megadeth records. And maybe that's why this album is actually the least featured Megadeth record at the band's shows. Well, once again, not counting their latest studio output, which actually is closing in on this one already. But at the same time, unlike with many others, there might be another, at least a partial, explanation for it. Megadeth 14 Studio Output features the track The Blackest Crow, which Dave refuses to perform on stage as it was originally written about his mother-in-law's struggle with Alzheimer's disease. In an interview to GuitarWorld.com, Mustaine said that he wrote this song inspired by a success of an alternative medicine in his mother-in-law's treatment, but once he'd completed it, he decided the lyrics were too heavy, as it turned out that the subject of this track had died, and although he himself loves the song, he still believes it does not belong at a Megadeth show, as according to Dave, it is too tragic and heartbreaking. And here's the thing, well, don't get me wrong, I don't really think that Super Collider is among the strongest albums Megadeth have ever released, but I actually truly believe that The Blackest Crow is among the most interesting and unusual songs in the band's entire catalog. And while I totally understand and respect Dave's decision, I would absolutely love to hear this song played live in front of the crowd. Especially because it is one of those songs which evokes slightly different feelings, which sometimes are needed for each of us. And yes, I actually do understand that this might be the case because of where I am at right now and because of everything I and my nation are going through at the moment. So here, just once again, as always, guys, I wanted to thank you all for supporting me, this show in Ukraine through this very and very difficult time. And please, guys, do not forget that the biggest war since World War II is going on right now, right in the middle of Europe. And please continue supporting us in any way you personally can. And to all those who would like to tell me in the comments to not mix politics and metal, well, if you're watching this video, I assume 
you are familiar with a little band called Megadeth and thrash metal overall. And maybe, just maybe, you might want to read some of the absolutely not political lyrics of this and many other of the huge bands in the genre, before saying something about metal having to stay out of current events around the world. On Dystopia, they've once again introduced a new lineup and at the same time a slight return to the origins of their own sound. And while there are still 6 out of 13 tracks which have never been played live on this record, those being Death From Within, Bullet To The Brain, Look Who Is Talking, The Emperor, Lost Dying Wish and the cover Foreign Policy, the album's title track was actually able to do something none of the Megadeth songs written in the past two decades were able to achieve, become a stable at the band's set list. And so as of right now, Dystopia has already been played almost as many times as Mechanics, rapidly becoming the most performed Megadeth song written in the 21st century. And here's the thing, this album, just like its follow-up, actually features none of the songs which I would mind hearing live at a Megadeth show. And even more, I would actually love it if the band would play the deep cuts from it, instead of some of their most popular tunes. <laughs> And thus we come to the band's latest studio output, The Sick, The Dying and The Dead. Now, in a 2022 interview, Dave Mustaine was actually questioned about the statistics of the band's setlist, and during that interview he actually said that he would only play the songs from the new album depending on the radio reception and the fans' tastes, hinting that he would actually be okay with not performing any of those if the band's fans do not like their new album. Yet, as we all know, the fans' reception to the sick, the dying and the dead has been simply incredible. Yet, for some weird reason, there were still only two tracks from this record performed on the following The Sick, The Dying and The Dead tour. Those being We'll Be Back and Soldier On, with the band once again ignoring the album's title track. And here's the thing, as I said in my review of this record, I believe that it is actually one of the strongest albums this band has put out in a very long time. And while I totally do understand that it might be a nightmare creating a setlist for a band like Megadeth, with so many fans longing to hear the Undying Classics and Undying Classics only, yet still I believe that many songs from this particular album definitely do deserve to be performed live in front of a crowd. And who knows, maybe on a following tour, which is about to start, the band might finally do this. But what do you guys personally think? Would you like the band to play more songs from The Sick, The Dying and The Dead? And which of the more than 170 songs in their catalog do you think Megadeth should absolutely include in their future setlist? Please let us know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching this video guys and we will prevail. Slava Ukraine!